Hi, I'm Shalane, this is Dean, and we are Grassroots, Grassroots Living. Living. And as you may or may not know, we, like so many, are stranded full-time RVers because <laughs> um, of this whole thing, right? Social distancing, blah, blah, blah. So we usually do travel videos, but we have been doing a little mini series on like camping slash survival stuff slash what? What do you call what we've been doing? You know, my, my basic thing was not a survivalist thing. It was simply people are needing to get away, social distance, get out yeah. in the national forest. And, but they, they're really afraid to boondock. Yeah, some people um, want to get out and thinking, they're thinking, hey, this is a good time to go camping. And some of them have never even been. So we're doing kind of this little mini series for you. Um, so two videos ago, we did sanitation. The last video was power, like kind of off-grid power, mm -hmm. right? And this time we're doing water. Next one will be next Tuesday and it's gonna be cooking. That one's gonna be really, really good. Um, so as usual, Dean will we'll start with just how to hook up if you happen to have a camper and you wanna go to a friend's house and stay out in your camper by the side of their house. How do you hook up to their water? What are some kind of do's and do nots on that? And then we're gonna show you some little toys, right? Uh -huh. Water filtering toys. But if you don't wanna go to the store, cause you're like legit, you are social distancing to the max, right? And you wanna use what you have on hand, there's probably a way that you can create a really good water filter with what you have at home. No drilling, no cutting, no nothing fancy. And we're gonna show you a very basic water filter so that's the plan for the day here we go okay so as we showed you in the last couple of segments on water and power if you have a friend that will allow you to stay at their house almost all houses have some sort of an outdoor faucet you can simply just take your hose that you'd normally have in an rv park hook it up into the faucet and you're, you're good to go uh, that's about the easiest thing that you could possibly do and still create social distance between you and other people and just stay in your RV. Um, I would suggest a couple of things though if you do this. One, this little part here is a water regulator. You never know what kind of water pressure you're going to get and you don't want to blow out your lines. Keep that in mind. I would strongly suggest getting one of those. This is set between 40 and 50 psi. Uh, the other thing I would suggest if they use their outdoor faucet a lot is to get a splitter. It just comes off. Um, that way you can hook yours directly to it, always have water while they use theirs to water gardens or whatever that they're going to use it for. Keep those two things in mind, I think you'll be in good shape. All right, so another option that you have is simply to get jugs of water. Uh, you can, like when we're in quartzite, we could simply go into town, get jugs of water, bring it in, put it in our fresh water tank, we're good to go. I had to do that virtually every day or every other day to keep it going, but it was a way to get water into the system. Okay, keep in mind that if you do have um, time, energy, money, the desire to do so, you can run to um, Walmart or somewhere really quick. There's a lot of different products out there. You could order it from Amazon if they still have it. This is just a couple. Um, this one is called the Mini Sawyer. We haven't used it yet. As you can see, it's still in its package. We probably won't use it. We just keep it in the car all the time. We have quite a few things that we um, always keep in our truck just in case of emergency. This one is a, well, let me tell you a little bit about this one. It comes with the, the filter, which gets you like 100,000 gallons of water, something crazy like that. It comes with a little bag and the cleaning plunger and a drinking straw. And you can also hook it up to um, just a water bottle. So this one is super handy. We like it. Like I said, we haven't used it yet though, um, but it's one of the options. And then this one is a life straw, which you guys have probably seen. We have used this. We've used it actually quite a bit and that can clean a lot of water as well. So this might be just something you might want to think about picking up sometime just to toss in your car so that you always have it. Um, we will put links in the description below to um, probably these products and similar things so that you can kind of look at those and see if there's one that you might like might work for you. Okay, so a couple of years ago, uh, I think we've alluded to this before, we actually spent two weeks in a tent 
and the only water that we had available was pond water. So I'm going to kind of take you a little bit through kind of what we did there, but let me just say this first thing. If you'll just look down in the description, we're going to put a link to our new group page. It's called uh, LYL Tribe, Little Tribe. It stands for Live Your Love. And in it, you'll see a file attached that will allow you to access a blog that we did for all 14 days we we're there. Now, what I would do is I'd take water out of the, of the pond. I would put it through a filtration process made from a um, empty one gallon uh, milk jug. And then we'd put it through our, well, I guess you could call it like a Berkey, but it's called the Aqua Rain uh, that we'd picked up. It has a couple of ceramic filters on the inside. And um, anyhow, the water was drinkable. It was very tasty. There was no pond taste whatsoever. And I'm actually going to show you this on a small scale and show you how you could do it if you didn't have an aqua rain and still drink purified water. Okay, before Dean gets started on showing you this super, super, super basic um, water filtration system, we did want to talk to you really quick about a couple of things you should probably just always have in your car, always and forever. Um, one of them is just a simple multi-tool or a pocket knife. A multi-tool is better than a pocket knife, but a pocket knife for sure. Um, I know this sounds really weird to most people, but we always have this crappy looking little grate in our truck because you just never know when you're going to get stranded and you need to do a little fire. If we wanted to um, boil water at any time, we always have this funny looking little sad grate in our vehicle. Um, a bottle of water. Uh, clean water is nice to have and then when you're done with the clean water, if you still need water, you have the water bottle you can use. Also something to cook in. Another funky little thing that we have that most people probably don't have is we always carry around a little coffee pot so we can always boil water. Um, and then of course some kind of a fire starter, matches, a lighter. We have this, which we love. Um, it's called a useful thingy. It's, that's what it's called, right? Useful thingy. And it's a lighter, which you probably can't see it. Uh, <laughs> But I don't, I don't, don't even know how to describe it. You could probably describe it better. But anyway, the whole point is, is that it's rechargeable. So like it lasts forever. It does, it's not gas, it's something else. It's and you not, know, not butane. Yeah, so anyway, it's called a useful thingy. We really, really, really love it. But you don't have to have this, but some kind of uh, fire starter that you should have in your car all the time. So just a thought, now Dean is going to show you how to make this little water filter. Okay, like I said earlier, when we did this and we were using our water from the pond, I was using something on a little bigger scale than what I'm about to show you, this plus our aqua rain. And I'm going to show you something that you could use that's fairly simple and easy to do. Uh, I'm just going to show you this with a little regular uh, water bottle. The first thing I'm going to do is cut off the bottom. Okay, now that I have the bottom cut out of it, the next thing I'm gonna do is stick, is stick some sort of cloth in there. Um, we use cheesecloth. In this case, I'm just gonna use a regular uh, paper towel. If you were doing it on a larger scale or if you didn't have a, a paper towel, you could also um, use your t-shirt yeah. or a piece of your t-shirt, any kind of cloth that you have on you. Certainly could. You're just pushing it up against the sides. Yeah. Okay, now that I have my cloth up against the side as best I can, I'm just going to take this activated charcoal. You can find that in the um, fish stores everywhere, or you go back to Walmart, they'll sell these type of things. Just any sort of activated charcoal that you can keep on hand. So, if you can't get uh, activated charcoal. It is possible for you to get that you could just use regular charcoal um, and there are places you can look online for this but the, the most common way is simply to, to build yourself a nice little campfire and then throw dirt over the top of it. 
so that you want that you want a nice campfire going so you can get those embers really going get them hot and then suffocate it what that will do after a day or two is that will create nice hard pieces of charcoal then you can then uh, just with a rock or whatever smash it up uh, get it into maybe pea size or even a powdery type of, of consistency and then you can use that now activated charcoal is much better than just regular charcoal but in a pinch you could still do that okay you can see that I've filled the activated charcoal about halfway up next I'm going to do is just take some sand to get that from a creek bottom you can get that from a playground you can go out and actually buy sand if you'd like good clean sand if you'd like I'm going to fill it up enough that it'll keep the, the charcoal from floating once I start pouring water into it now when we were using our larger scale filter I still had room at the top and so I took a lot of tall weeds tall grass and I kind of wrapped it up around the top and stuck it up there that'll help to, to filter out some of the bigger chunks plus any weight that I can keep on it that will keep the activated charcoal from floating I'm going to do I think I have enough sand here to keep it down so I'm not going to add another little layer of grass on top of this but on a larger scale you might want to to, to do that sort of thing okay as you can see we've gathered a little pond water down here I'm going to go ahead and pour the water in there and it might make might take two or three times for it to finally get all the fine particles out of the way to make it a clear batch of water so keep that in mind you might have to send it through a couple of times just to to kind of clear out the filter just like what you would with a Brita with the Brita filter I always recommend that you let it go two or three times before you start to use it so when I do put the water through here it will the first one or two times it'll actually have a little bit of a black tint to it that's just the activated charcoal powder um, after you've ran it through two or three times you will start to see crystal clear water and that's what we're going to show you here in just a second now once you have it coming through there crystal clear it's probably okay to drink in a in a desperate situation you certainly could try um, I would always recommend and I think everybody would say the same thing that you go ahead and boil the water just to make sure that you pull out all the pathogens kill all the pathogens in the in bacteria in the water um, we like to carry a little thing it's called a biolite and in our next segment when we're talking about cooking we love this thing because you can boil water with just little tiny twigs if you're always having to build a campfire and putting that grate that we showed you earlier you're having to use a lot of expend a lot of wood in order to get a little bit of water so like I said we'll show you this in our next segment next week but uh, I just want you to be aware that to drink the water to be absolutely 100% sure that it's going to be fine I would definitely recommend boiling it usually about one minute of a good rolling boil unless you're at a higher elevation six seven thousand feet or higher then you might want to go more with three minutes all right this is the second time that I've ran it through and it's getting a lot clearer okay so I'm going to try this a third time and we'll see if we're getting a pretty clear water now so hopefully those things helped you out if you're wanting to kind of take a little fun camping trip or get out of the city for a minute or something or right? just enjoy boondocking yeah it's fun um so just a reminder that there will be a link below to our little tribe 
and that's where you're going to find the document um, to see the two weeks that we spent um, living kind of off grid and off the pond water and that kind of thing if you want to check that out um, please like subscribe and share anything else i think that's it okay in these weird funky hard times keep your chin up and your smile on this is Grassroots Living reminding you to get down to the grassroots of what makes you happy and live your love. We're thinking of you. We'll see you next time. Peace out.